a terrible loss. Uh, the last time I was with Liz over Thanksgiving, we talked a lot about the things Liz had observed in Margot and Gwenny and Drew, how she was the world's premier expert on each of them as they are right now, and how desperate she was to know every future version of them. It was, as Jessica said, the very heart of the loss she was facing, and she knew it. It has struck me since that knowing a person is actually fairly rare. So much of life is performative. Knowing each other takes time. Time and our full attention and a total lack of projection that just ends up confirming some version of a person we've half invented. In some cases, when people are inclined to hold back, it takes some kind of mitigating event, like sorority initiation <laughs> or being trapped in an elevator. In Liz's case, it took getting really sick to set aside facades. So Liz, here's what I noticed about you. You got style to burn. Any hair color or cut seems to work. Glasses, no glasses, flip-flops, Jimmy Choo's, little black dresses or long johns. You are always you, inhabiting yourself perfectly. You are a stud. You're not afraid of international family travel. <laughs> <laughs> or therapy. Or hitting the grocery store with five kids in tow the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> you can run and surf and snowboard and stay out late and jump in cold lakes and cry. And you can dance at a black tie in sequins or in the living room with plastic instruments Boy, can you dance. You have sneaky charisma. You can give a speech better than any candidate running for president today. <laughs> That's kind of faint praise. Uh, but at this podium, under bright lights, you talked to each of us like we were old friends, and you made hundreds of people think hard and take action. Off stage, your charisma stands. Your nurses adore you not only because you are so attractive and hip and funny, but because you know their names and their boyfriends' names and their ex-boyfriends' names. <laughs> because you never forgot that while your life was on the line, they had lives too. New chapters to report each time you settled into your recliner for an infusion, and those lives were interesting to you. Even though managing your disease and the litany of side effects could have Every hour of the last six years, you believed there was actually more to talk about and think about. As Jessica said so perfectly, you saw in each of us something unique and special that you wanted to know and understand. Which brings me to your humility. Even though you are so perceptive and savvy and as intelligent as anyone I've known, you were intimidated by the Stanford dorks. <laughs> Even though I told you a hundred times when it comes to the overeducated, just remember you can't teach cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you always had it in your head that where your marriage was concerned, you got the better end of the deal. I don't know about that, Lizzie. <laughs> It takes a pretty powerful force to ground a guy like Andy Lotz. Without getting into foolish comparisons, I'll just say that you left him better than you found him. <laughs> Wiser and more compassionate and reoriented toward great meaning. I noticed two more things. You are tenacious, so tired and devastated. 127 rounds of chemotherapy, and you could still listen to an eight-year-old's inning-by-inning report of the game. <laughs> or watch rehearsals for a new play written and staged by two tweens. <laughs> or sit through the latest passionate analysis of a New England-born watchmaker. <laughs> or the desperate questions of another friend who is scared, because she has come to love you so much while your body, a faulty container for the vitality that is you, betrays you. I know some double black diamond types, mountain climbers, long distance runners, some of them are here. 
and we all agree, Liz, you are the gutsiest endurance athlete of them all. And lastly, you are honest. You don't need everything to be tidy or right in your house or in your car, for sure. <laughs> but also with your family and your marriage and in your mind. And that's what makes your friendship so exceptional. You're totally okay naming and owning the ragged edges of things. All the contradictions and overreactions and outright failures and every moment of small heartedness. The last conversation we had, we were lying in Liz's bed after too much Thanksgiving dinner. She knew it wouldn't be much longer. Her body hurt in terrible new ways. After a while, we stopped talking and just stared at each other, pillow to pillow, her cell phone and the remote control between us, and sobbed. When I lifted my head from the pillow to kiss her hand, which was the only part of her that didn't hurt, there was a wet spot as big as a salad plate. And what I said then is what I'll say now. I feel so lucky to have known you, Liz, to have gotten past all your deferring and deflecting and seen you in your fullest light. I will not make you a hero when you are gone. That would defeat everything I've learned. I will remember the things that made you human. I will treasure them, and I will miss all of you. <laughs>